Edentula scanning is something you know of interest for a lot of people. And one, this is probably the, the hardest scan to do properly because you need meticulous scan strategy. You need to know what you're doing and you need to retract the soft tissue very well. Once again, if I gave you an edentulous model on a bench and I told you to scan it, it's quite easy. The issue people have with scanning edentulous model, uh, scans inside the mouth, intraorally, is the soft tissue management because they don't retract the soft tissues enough. And oftentimes I even get the patient to use cheek retractors and hold them, especially for the lower if it's a resorbed arch, just retract the cheeks and then it makes everything much easier. And you have your DA to help control the tongue. Now, very briefly, let's go over the scan strategy for a maxillary arch. You always start on the rugae, okay? Because that is where most of the, the really key information and, and obvious landmarks for the scanner are, this rugae area. Because if you imagine, if you scan this, it kind of looks the same as this, so you can start getting stitching areas, errors. So if you start here, it gives the scanner more data to be able to basically connect all the images together. So you start on the rugae and how it works is you basically move along this, this area and build that, that whole scan up. And then you continue to go back to the rugae, scan more of the maxillary arch, scan more of the residual ridge, start moving towards the buckle. And then lastly, you scan the palate. And look, there's all sorts of different scan strategies, scan strategies out there for scanning edentulous arches. I know Professor Lo Rousseau has some, every company has some. The most important thing is that you follow some strategy rather than just trying to do it haphazardly. A lower mandibular edentulous ridge is one of the hardest things to scan because you have the tongue. This is often very resorbed. Uh, you have the floor of the mouth moving up and down and you have the cheeks. And the key in scanning this is just soft tissue control retract the cheeks and hold the tongue really well. Any way you can. I like to use a mirror. There's ScanMate. Um, there's a lot of different tools that you can use to retract. But the key part is, is that if you scan an area and then the tongue moves and the floor of the mouth moves and it's basically changed that area for the scanner, it makes it very hard to continue. You need everything to be immobile, essentially, and it makes it quite an easy scan to do. Dry the area and scan it. And where you start on the lower arch is the retromolar pad, and you just treat it like your normal full arch scan. You go around the arch, and you go across, rotate, and then scan the buckle. Oftentimes, these ridges are so resorbed, you scan the buckle and the occlusal in one pass. You don't need to do occlusal, buckle, and then lingual. Oftentimes, after you've just done two passes, you scan the whole ridge again because it's often very resorbed. A common question is bite registration for the for the edentulous patient. How do I do it? And the answer is you need some sort of bite rim or old denture or something like that. You know, if you have a patient who just comes in with no dentures, no bite rim, and they're completely edentulous, you're going to have to send it to the lab to make something to capture that bite. And Medit software has incredible features for scanning dentures. And they even explain it to you right there in the software. And how you do this, how you scan a denture on the Medit software is you start in the intaglio surface of the denture. And why you do that is because that is the rough surface. You don't want to start on the outside surface, which is usually highly polished. And so you scan the entire intaglio, as you can see there, and note, you are scanning this outside the mouth because obviously you're scanning the, the fitting surface. And then you rotate across and then you scan the, the buckle, you scan all the teeth, you scan the occlusal, as you can see there. And what you can also see is what the Medit software does, which is really cool, is that once you scan the intaglio surface, it can recognize the fitting surface to your edentulous scan and it will join it together for you, which is a really cool feature. This is the same example for the lower denture. Scan the fitting surface first, rotate, start scanning some of those flanges, and you can see automatically it has already aligned that with the model scan. So then becomes the question, what if the denture is loose? Sometimes patients come in and their denture is very old and it's very loose, and you simply do a pickup impression. 
This is one of the only times I will do impressions in my practice, and it's for a pickup impression of a denture. And then you scan that. So it's very straightforward. So with your scanning goals, what you really want is you want a clean, efficient, precise scan. You want an accurate site, a scan of the site of interest. And for the, you know, for the for the single crown, your site of interest is your crown preparation, your contact areas, your opposing arch, and your bite. And you really want to master getting an accurate bite registration. And the easiest way to do that is just check your bite registration. And if it looks wrong, delete it. If the bite registration does not look like what's in the patient's mouth, delete it and redo it. And then you basically can go from doing a single crown scan and as you develop and, and get more comfortable and more comfortable, you can move on to a whole quadrant. And everything from a quadrant to implants to full arch implants, this is all doable with scanners these days. A common question I get asked is, you know, what is your tooth preparation set? Um, and honestly, guys, you can use whatever you like. Um, that's just the reality. Uh, I like these crown preparation sets. I mean, this one's from Comet and it's a ceramic crown prep set. Equally, a lot of companies make these, everything from Brazler, um, my, my singer makes them. So the reality is I never used these for years. I've only been using a crown preparation set for the past maybe two years. And because all you really need is a, is a good combination of cylindrical burrs that you like to use. And usually what I like to do is do my bulk reduction with a green or a black and then polish it with a red. That's all I do. I don't like to get too fancy. One of my favorite burrs, I will say, and I will put this in every crown prep set, is this KS6 diamond burr. Now, this looks very chunky, and that's why I like it. This is an excellent burr for occlusal reduction and also your buccal and lingual shoulders or chamfers. And the reason why it's so good is that the larger the burr, the less likely you are to slip or you know, damage a prep a preparation shoulder or chamfer that you've already created. So I really like to use this burr, and then I would usually follow up with something like a fine diamond cylindrical. And that's basically it. I really don't get fancy. The only other thing I would mention is magnification is a must. I think that goes without saying. We all use magnification these days, and or I hope, and electric handpiece. Uh, it's something that I've only been using in the past couple of years. And I can um, highly recommend them. If you've got an extra extra bit of money and uh, you want to make your life easier, electric hand pieces are amazing. Uh, it just feels so much better than an air turbine. And I would be using those for my crown preps daily. The other thing about crown preparation, I mean, the interesting thing about scanners and what's been shown by literature is that a scanner will literally make your preps better. Because the reality is, guys, we all started somewhere. This is a preparation that I scanned a while ago, and obviously it doesn't look too nice. It looks a bit rough. The margins aren't too clear. And when you look at that and you've scanned that and you analyze your scans, it gives you immediate feedback about your performance. And you will never get this feedback with an impression. And slowly, with that constant feedback every day, you just get better and better. And you will just improve your scans naturally because you can see the areas where you didn't do too well. So analyze your scans and take a mental note of how to improve for the next time. Maybe your shoulder wasn't very smooth. You know, oftentimes I see shoulders that are a bit jagged. That's not ideal. And slowly, like I mentioned, just with this constant feedback, without a doubt, if you take your time and really think about your preparation, you will get better with time. Lastly, and I won't spend too much time on this because you can spend a whole day teaching Minute software, but you need to learn the software, guys. A lot of people, I hope, when they buy from their distributors, they are getting a good onboarding process. But if you're not, you need to either go on to the Meta Education website and go learn it because they have an excellent um, list of videos about their software, or there's a lot of different educators out there. Shameless plug, I educate on Minute software. But really, the key is to understand how to harness the software because it's very powerful. Little things like how to use the trimming tools, when to use the trimming tools, why you may need to use them, why not. 
There's other analysis tools. I don't use every single tool in every crown preparation, but some of them are very useful. Like when you're doing prep analysis, if you want to make sure you've done enough occlusal reduction. The other thing is uh, margin lines. This is very useful for your lab. And you're the dentist who is looking at the preparation. You probably have a better idea of where the margin line is, especially if you're sending STL files, which are black and white, monochrome. And so it makes it quite harder to marginate accurately when it's a monochrome model. Labs are very good at it because they do it all day, every day, but it, this can help a lot. Other tools like controlling scan depth. Medit is one of the few scanners on the market that allows you to control this. And so you can go from 12 mill millimeters to 23 millimeters in scan depth. And that's understanding why you may need to use a, a larger scan depth. For example, post preparation. I mean, not many people do those, but sometimes you need to. Or when, if you're scanning implants and the scan bodies are very high, it's sometimes useful. Why do you want to lower the scan depth if you find you're capturing a lot of soft tissue and it's frustrating? There's also these tools down here. A lot of these are very useful. You can scan impressions, you can scan metals, um, you can control how aggressive the AI is. There's color filtering. These are all very useful tools that you should have in your arsenal. And last but not least, everyone knows how amazing the Medit apps are and they keep releasing them. I mean, they just released a occlusion analyzer app and um, a dedicated margin lines app. And so these are all tools that you really need to learn and, and you're getting them for free with your Medit scanner. So why wouldn't you? Now they have Medit splints, they have Medit design, ortho simulator. There's so many tools out there for you. And there's more coming in the future. I can't say much now, but uh, it's one of those things that you really want to spend some time mastering the software because it's not just about the scanner. And speaking on that, that's basically the end, my friends. Um, shameless plug, I do run the Institute of Digital Dentistry and we have an online academy. Because I'm placed in New Zealand, this is where I live, it's geographically isolated. So I've developed an entire online library with over 80 hours of CPD now. And that just goes over everything because in my practice, we do everything from single crowns to full mouth rehab to full arch implants and everything in between. So anyone who's interested in learning a little bit more and wants to take it to the next level, I recommend you scan that QR code. And that's everything for this webinar. Thanks so much everyone for watching and listening. And now I welcome any questions.